Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I'm getting ready to load my new skid loader into my 7x12 dump trailer. And this is my first time loading this machine in this trailer, but it's a long shot from being my first time loading equipment. I've put a lot of different machines on different types of trailers, and I've had a few things go wrong, and I've seen other people have things go wrong. And in this video, I want to kind of cover some safety concerns and some things you can do to mitigate the risk of those. And I also want to talk about the weight of the machine to the weight of the trailer to the weight of my truck and the safety aspect of all that. So the first thing that you have to worry about when loading a machine like this is the weight of the machine, which this is a 10,000 pound machine, that 10,000 pounds, right as it gets onto the back of the trailer, it puts a tremendous amount of weight on your tongue, can lift the back of the truck off the ground. And in that scenario, most likely, your truck's gonna start rolling away. So that's the number one thought you should have before you load a machine is, how do I keep my truck from lifting off the ground and rolling away? And there's several different things you can do, and we're gonna go over them one at a time. So the first thing I always do is put the emergency brake on the truck on. And that's a good idea to take pressure off of your transmission pin as, as you're pushing on and that weight is trying to push the truck forward. But like we just talked about, potentially you can lift the rear end of the truck off the ground and that, that brake doesn't help you anymore. So one way to combat that is to put the truck in four wheel drive. And with the emergency brake on and you're in four wheel drive, now you have some assist from the front wheels keeping you from sliding. But I don't really feel like that's completely sufficient. The best solution that you can have to prevent the back of your truck from lifting is kickstands on the back of the trailer. That it's basically like a built in jack stand. You pull a pin, drop it down and put a pin back in. Now when I bought this trailer, I was mainly hauling my tractor that's five to 6,000 pounds. And the manufacturer of the trailer said that they didn't think I needed kickstands because I was ready to buy them. And they said, we'll sell them to you, but we don't think you need them because a dump trailer, just the geometry of it is a little bit different than the trailer I was using. And they were right in that scenario. My tractor would not lift the back of my truck when I was using the dump trailer like it did on my utility trailer. But this is a lot heavier machine, so I can't predict whether or not it's going to lift the back of the truck. So I need to assume that it's going to. So the next thing we can do, we've set the emergency brake, we put it in four-wheel drive. If you have kickstands, you're going to drop those, but I don't. So the next thing you can do is chalk the wheels on the trailer itself. And putting on your emergency brake and chalking your wheels is no extra effort, but provides so much safety. And I chalk the wheels on the trailer, not the truck, because as we mentioned, the rear wheel might lift off the ground and you're already trying to lock the truck in place. So I've got this big wood block right here. I'll just push that up against that wheel and that should definitely help out. Now we've established that we're trying to make sure the truck doesn't move. And the last point on that is you want to park on flat ground. If you're on perfectly flat ground, it's not going anywhere anyway. But my property does not have an inch of flat ground on it. We're semi-flat right now. And sometimes that's the best you can do. If you have to load onto any kind of an incline at all, I would point the truck uphill if possible. That way it's at least trying to slide towards you, not push away from you. And in that scenario, your, it's going to have the back end of your trailer be just a little bit lower and help you with the incline and the approach angle as you pull in. Now that we've got our truck locked down, the next question is, do you pull in forward or backward? I'd say I've watched every video that exists about loading a skid loader, probably two or three times per video. And a lot of guys drive their skid loaders on forward. To me, it makes more sense to go on backward. As you pull on and you hit a tip point, 
where you go from the angle of the ramp to the flat of the trailer, it's going to have this point where it feels really tippy like you're about to fall. And same thing as you're coming off. And it's going to feel like you're going to fall, but you won't. That being said, we're thinking safety for a one in a million scenario. So if, hypothetically, if your skid loader tips over and falls off your ramps, would you rather it fall onto its back or fall onto the loader? I would much rather have it fall on the loader where at least as I feel it tipping, maybe you can lift the loader and kind of catch yourself and then straight tip yourself back onto the tracks. So just for that reason, I think I'm gonna go on backward. The second consideration on going forwards or backward is how it centers the weight on the trailer. And you want a minimum of 10% of the weight of your fully loaded trailer to rest on your tongue. Any less than that and you risk losing control of the vehicle because you're, you're taking the traction off the rear of the truck. So I have a way safe hitch on mine that will let us see exactly the right place to park the skid loader on the trailer to make sure we're getting the right amount of tongue weight. So I'm going to park it where I think it needs to go and then I'm going to use my gauge to verify that that's the right place and then from now on I'll know exactly where I want it to stop at. There were two things that happened during this video that surprised me. The first is that the dump bed lifted up. When I've watched other people's videos, that's never happened. The second thing is that the grapple didn't quite fit inside the trailer, and I thought I would have plenty of room. You can see the truck tires lifting off the ground, and that puts a lot of stress on your hitch. So if I keep this trailer and haul this machine in it, I will definitely be getting kickstands. This looks like it's going to be a disappointing result because with the grapple, I didn't have a way to get it far enough back to be able to close the doors. I'm trying to think of a way that I could do that with the bucket, like by setting the bucket in first or something. But the only way I think it would work is if the bucket is standing up and down Obviously, I can't do that with the, with the boom because my door has to be able to open. So, I'll think about it some more. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. But I think 7x12 is not a big enough dump trailer to haul this machine with. I think it needs to be at least 14 feet. So, we're going to try it again with the bucket and see how close we are to fitting. So with the bucket on, we're hanging about six inches out the back. Now there is a removable tooth bar on the front of this that accounts for part of that. But even if I took the tooth bar off, it would still overhang by about three inches. So I either need a longer trailer or a shorter bucket, or I'm going to have to set the edge of the bucket up onto either the front or the back edge of the trailer. Now while I have that loaded, let's take a look at the way safe hitch. I should be getting about 1500 pounds of tongue weight, but instead I'm getting 2300 pounds. And that's a result of having the machine on backward, which puts all the weight towards the front. So looking at it right now, if I really needed to haul this machine, I think I would turn the machine around, pull on forward, and set the front edge of the bucket on the front edge of the trailer. I think these way safe hitches are a great tool for knowing how your weight is distributed. If you're interested in getting one of them, use code ROCKHILL at checkout 
to save 15% on your order. So we are within a few inches of that bucket fitting. You could almost remove the tooth bar from the front and have it fit. Now it's in there right now and I could drive, but I don't know if the hydraulics sag on these at all, because if it did, it would be putting a lot of pressure on my gate. And I just don't know if this is gonna work or not. I'm gonna put some more thought into my options here and I look forward to hearing your comments on it. Uh, Weight-wise, it works, but it would work better with the machine turned around so that that weight is scooted back a little bit more. We'd be properly balanced on the trailer. But basically, my advice is to get a 7x14 as a minimum size for hauling this machine. Anyway, we learned a little bit today. I appreciate you taking time to watch. I'll put links over here to more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.